Hey guys, Mike here at MH Tutorials. Welcome back. Well, guys, today we are going to talk about ambient occlusion. Okay. Now, for those of you who have no idea what that is, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, but let me try. Uh, ambient occlusion is a way to calculate um, light bounce and shadows. Um, so, for example, if you have two objects that are extremely close together and you have light on that area, then probably the shadows between the two objects will be very dark, right? As you move the objects more apart, then the shadow will become less dark, more gray or even light gray, okay? Because more light is uh, coming into that area and has the opportunity to reflect on these surfaces, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, what we're going to do today is we're going to set up a basic scene. We're going to do a normal render pass, and then we're going to do a separate ambient occlusion render pass. Okay. And then we're going to go into compositing software and we're going to add these two render passes together to form one image being a render, including a ambient occlusion render. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So, what I did here is I set up a, an extremely simple scene. This is just a cube, took out two faces and created a room. I put some very basic polygon shapes in here and I set up a few light sources. One, two, and three, there we go. Nothing special going on there, right? Alrighty, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add some materials to our surfaces, okay? I'm going to select my room, right-click, assign the material, Lambert, just simple white. Okay, there we go. Then we're going to take our cylinder here, right-click, assign the material. We'll do MIA underscore X, go to my material tab, presets, chrome, replace. We'll take our cone, right click, sign the material. Let's do a Fong E. And let's turn that into red. Then we'll take our cube here, right click, assign the material. Let's do a Fong E as well. And then we're going to hit our checkered box and we're going to select marble and apply that, all right? We're gonna take our torus, right click, assign new material, and we'll do Fong E once again, and we'll change that color to, let's do blue, okay. We're quickly gonna uh, set up a bookmark here. So let's say this is the shot we're going for. We're gonna go to view, bookmark, edit bookmarks, and we'll call it bookmark, Oops, sorry, bookmark, there we go, apply and close, there we go, and we're going to start off by doing a quote-unquote regular render, okay, so we're going to go to our render settings, we're going to open that, make sure you're on a mental ray, go to your indirect, indirect lighting tab, sorry, make sure you got global illumination selected and final gathering, quality tab at 1.5, Ray tracing is on, settings are default, it's okay. We're gonna to go to our common tab, we're gonna scroll down and make sure that your image size is at HD 1080, all right? And then we're simply just gonna hit render to do a render pass. And during the render, I'll pause the video, I'll see you guys when it's done. All right guys, here's our render. Now as you can see, my light source is hitting my Chrome surface directly and it's kind of blown out, but that's fine. The reason why I did that is to create this bounce light on these objects here. So you can kind of see what happens after we add the ambient occlusion render pass, okay? So this guy is all right for now. So we're gonna go and save this out, save image, and we'll save it as a PNG file. And I'll call this uh, tutorial uh, render normal, right? Okay, I'm just gonna save it on my desktop. There we go. I'm gonna minimize that. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up our ambient occlusion render pass. And we don't want to mess up our textures and so forth. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to, uh, let's see where did that thing go, edit. And we're going to go to, where do you go? Select all by type and go to geometry. So all that is now selected, all right? Now we need to be in our channel box and not in our attribute editor. So we're gonna hit control A, okay? And we're gonna make sure that we are in uh, our render tab and we're gonna go to this button right here, create new layer and assign selected objects. Now we have all the objects selected. So we're just gonna hit that, which creates a new layer. And I'm just gonna double click on that. I'm gonna call it my a O as in ambient occlusion underscore pass. All right, there we go. Now, before we move forward, make sure that you select that pass. Okay, and nothing has changed so far. And we're going to hit control A. And now you have an additional tab here, which is called your ambient occlusion pass. Okay. Now, if we go to our preset tab, you can scroll down and here you find occlusion. So let's select that, which makes our scene completely black. Now that's completely normal. The thing is, in order to create an ambient occlusion pass, you don't need any lights at all. In fact, when we render this, we're gonna turn off our global illumination and final gathering because it's only gonna delay the render, okay? So we have that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our uh, tab here, all right? And we're going to change some settings. Now for our samples, we're going to change that to 64. We're going to do our spread, 0 0.9. And our max distance, let's do 2.4. All right, all good. And we're going to go back to our render settings, like I said, and you can see here, render using mental ray. Back to our indirect lighting, we're going to turn off glow illumination and final gathering. And once again, we're going to hit render, and during the render, I'm going to pause. See you guys in a sec. All right, and I'm back. Well, this is our ambient occlusion render. And like I said, where objects come together, like for example, the wall and the floor in this, uh, this corner here, you see that it's going from white to gray to quite dark. Uh, here where the objects are actually touching, you, you can see almost black. Under here, you see a dark area and so forth, okay? So we got all that. We're gonna save this image out. So save image. We're going to save it as a PNG as well, and we'll call this uh, tutorial render, and we'll change that to AO.PNG for ambient occlusion, and save that. Now, we have these two render passes, right? So now we're going to open Photoshop. I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to look for my tutorial, uh, let's see, tutorial run on normal. And I'm gonna open that. So that's our file right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to, let's see if I can find it, yeah, file, go to place. We're gonna select our uh, ambient occlusion pass. And uh, let's see, we're oh, under tutorial, right? So where do you go? Tutorial render ambient occlusion, and we're going to open that. All right, so now we have two layers right here. We got, if we turn this guy off, oh, hang on, yeah, we got two layers. So we got our um, uh, our normal layer and our ambient occlusion. This one is placed on top of the other, right? So it's not uh, um, connected yet, but if we hit enter, the cross in the middle will disappear, all right? And now what we need to do is we need to go to the normal tab here, select that, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna select multiply, all right? Now, if we turn this layer on and off, this is specifically, if you look at these corners here, this is including our ambient occlusion pass, 
And now I'm going to turn it off. You can clearly see the difference, right? These areas are becoming a bit darker. I'll do it once again. The whole area around the torus and so forth. Now, an ambient occlusion pass is one method of render passing. I'll do uh, different tutorials in the near future, but hopefully this explains a little bit how to create an ambient occlusion pass and how to combine them in compositing software, for example, like Photoshop, all right? So uh, that's it. If you've got any questions, let me know as always, and thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.